Thank you for listening to my daddy's podcast. Hey, don't let these tears fool you. It's all dog around this mug. I'm good. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones. And yes, I am the host of the State of the Saints podcast. Thank you so much for checking out the State of the Saints podcast where we talk New Orleans Saints. I really do appreciate your time as we see individuals filing in. Um, I ask that you hit the like button. I ask that you subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Um. I'm going to be honest with you, Who That Nation. I don't know what direction this show is going to go in on today. I don't know what type of angle I'm going to come at you at. I'm just extremely frustrated by uh, this New Orleans Saints team. I'm extremely frustrated by this football team. It is not a day that goes by that we don't hear like something like that's just wacky and just off the wall. And it just seems like something always just comes up. It's, it never just seems like, you know, you can have a, a, a great day, you know, without some, some nonsensical stuff going on, uh, you know, with the new Orleans saints. And quite frankly, I'm extremely frustrated about it. Uh, on this edition, um, I'm going to be talking about my, Favorite New Orleans Saints player um, on the team right now, Ryan Ramchick. I know some people like Ryan Ramchick. Yes, uh, my favorite player is an offensive lineman. (laughs) Uh, And we're going to be talking about uh, his season being in jeopardy, possibly his career being in jeopardy. Uh, We're also going to be talking about uh, some comments made by Michael Thomas. We're also going to be talking about Dennis Allen uh, talking about a pass catcher and a need for a pass catcher and how that could look for the New Orleans Saints. But let me go ahead and get into it. Let me go ahead and get into it. Let me go ahead and get into it. Who? All right, man. So I'm pretty sure everybody has heard already. And if you have not, uh, Ryan Ramchick, a star right tackle of the New Orleans Saints, came to the team in 2017, has been a really good player throughout the time he's been in the National Football League. Uh, back in 2021, Ryan Ramchek uh, dealt with a knee injury and has been dealing with it ever since. Um, that's probably one of the reasons why on the injury report during the season, you would see Ryan Ramchek having a veteran's day, uh, you know, a day where he just does not work. And it, it was because uh, he was dealing with his knee injury. So in the offseason, uh, the Saints uh, thought that Ryan Ramchek would address the issue, which he did. Uh, which is, you know, getting a surgery that could possibly help him. Now, we all know about some of the stories that came out uh, towards the end of the season about Ryan Ramchick. Uh, is his career over? Is he thinking about retirement? And, you know, the Saints, uh, you know, front office, the coaches, they all just completely just poo-pooed on that. And, oh, that, that's ridiculous. That's not going to happen. Well, Ryan Ramchick had the surgery and – Unfortunately, uh, things didn't go as planned. Now, this is a soundbite uh, from head coach Dennis Allen. And this is Dennis Allen talking a little bit about Ryan Ramchek's injury. Check it out. You know, at the Combine a few weeks ago, I was feeling a lot better about it. Um, And yet, I don't know that I'm seeing as much progress as I was hoping to see, you know, at this point. So... I think that still kind of remains to be seen. But here's the cool thing. We've got plenty of time. You know, no different than what we were talking about with with Cam and being a veteran player and, and uh, um, you know, probably not utilizing necessarily a lot during, during this OTA and, and uh, minicamp. You know, I would see the same thing, you know, with Ram too. So 
Um, I think we're just going to have to wait and see how that all goes as we go through, you know, all the off season and and as we get into the training camp aspect. Is that, is that something that could be a concern, maybe going into the season? Maybe? Yeah, yeah, I think it could be. Um, but again, like we'll we'll just have to kind of wait and see. It's going to go into the season. Who that nation? Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough of the lion. Enough of the beating around the bush. Ryan Ramchek has been dealing with this injury since 2021. He's been dealing with this injury and the New Orleans Saints been kind of putting this thing together with spit and glue. Um, he finally addresses, you know, the, the knee by getting a surgery and it didn't go as planned. So they may not want to admit it, but I think that's one of the main reasons why they went out and got Ali Udo from the Minnesota Vikings because they look at him as more of an insurance policy. And more than likely, uh, Ali Udo is going to be playing some football, possibly at the right tackle position for the New Orleans Saints, because it just seems like the New Orleans Saints always have these injuries towards these key players. And, you know, it, I, I don't know, man. It, it seems like, it's, you know, a lot of these injuries are being mishandled. And if you look at throughout the, the last – five to six years, it just seems like some of the most key players for the New Orleans Saints, they go down, they stay down. We look at Marshawn Lattimore. Marshawn Lattimore goes out, doesn't come back, right? He he leads the game against the Minnesota Vikings. He leads on a cart. The, you know, everybody like, oh, you know, it, it wasn't as bad as they said it was. So we all anticipate like, okay, man, he'll miss some time. It's not as bad as it seemed. So maybe he'll miss like two or three games. And the next thing you know, he's out for the rest of the season. You don't see him anymore. It was the same thing when it came to Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas gets hurt. Oh, you know, it, it wasn't as bad as we anticipated. We expect for him to be back. Never seen him again. Same thing happened. They minimized the situation with Jameis Winston when he got hurt and he had four fractures in his back. But it's not as bad as it seemed. And we, of course, never seen Jameis Winston ever again as a starting quarterback for the New Orleans Saints. I say that to say this with that nation. There is something going on. I don't know what it is. What There's that saying. Where there's smoke, there's fire. And it definitely seems that there's an issue with the medical staff of the New Orleans Saints yet again. Now, you're going to have those Cape Crusaders out there on Twitter or on X, whatever the hell you're calling it now, and they're going to try to lobby for the New Orleans Saints, and they're going to try to minimize me because I guess, you know, I don't have such a big name, and all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying, I'm not on a marquee everywhere that you see New Orleans Saints football, so they try to discredit you, but all of you, quite frankly, can't get the hell out of my face. If you are so much of an idiot that you cannot see what is transpiring here, then you, sir, are an enabler. And honestly, what really makes me sick with fans, especially some of these Saints fans out here, is how they turn a blind eye to situations that they, they turn a blind eye to these situations that they don't want to address because they, they want to put their own mind at ease. They don't want to they don't want to put two and two together. They rather just wrap it up and just say, oh, well, you always super negative about the team. Let me tell each and every one of you something. For those that may be watching this and probably just think I'm just some dude that just talk about Saints football in my mama's basement. I own my house, by the way. I've been watching the New Orleans Saints since I was four years old. That's about as far as I go back. I'm 37 years old. So... For over 30 years, I've been watching the New Orleans Saints. I watched the Saints through the good times and through the bad. I have never, as much losing as the Saints did when I was growing up, I have never seen the morale as low. And I have never seen a fan base that is so down on their organization and coach ever. And that's saying a lot as a Saints fan because – even though the Saints have had some lame duck coaches in the past, they have never, they have never looked at these guys and like, man, yeah, I ain't never seen no fight. I ain't never seen no grit. 
They ain't never been like that. I have never seen in my entire life the morale of the who that nation as low. I have never had less confidence in a coach. And I've seen some losing than I have in Dennis Allen. Dennis Allen is a do boy. That's right. I said it. Dennis Allen is a do boy. Don't try to prop this dude up and try to make it seem like he's an adequate coach. Don't try to dress it up here and try to make it seem like he knows what the hell he's doing. He doesn't. He is a do boy. He is a guy that understands that he's a losing coach and maybe he just happened to get the opportunity. So because of that, he kind of do- toes the line. But here's the reality. Unless you're an absolute idiot, once again, you don't believe anything that he says. You know the reason why people don't really watch Dennis Allen press conferences besides reporters because they have to? It's because nobody believes what he's saying. No, Not, not just the words that are coming out of his mouth because they feel like he's, he's not telling the truth. But it's because he has no swag, no drip, no confidence. There is nothing about Dennis Allen. I don't care if they... If somehow, some way the New Orleans Saints were to get Patrick Mahomes, he has a way of making Saints fans feel like it wouldn't even be that big of a deal. This organization will never be anything until this guy is gone. They'll probably win some football games. They'll probably win because what they have right now, they're putting good infrastructure around them. So they'll probably put some really good coaches around him to make him look like he's no know, he knows what he's doing. But they're not going to be able to remanufacture this thing year after year. The Saints will not live up to their potential until this guy is gone. And Mickey Loomis. Mickey Loomis. I just want to say this. Mickey Loomis still has Dennis Allen around. In my humble opinion, it's because he doesn't want people to feel like he made a mistake with the head coach position. There is no way in the world you get a B minus. You, you're, you're number 29 among coaches. You are the only coach in the bottom tier that still has his job. You are not going to convince me or anybody else that you couldn't have done better than what you did right here. You got players that are feeling like this dude had favoritism towards other players. This comes out of the player's mouth. They had an opportunity to change the narrative about how we think about Dennis Allen as a head coach, as a, as a, as a leader of men. And they pretty much confirmed what we already knew. But yet, once again, you'll have those do boys out there. You'll have those people out there that always, you know, try to support the team. Couldn't tell you anything past 2006, but want to sit up here and tell you what you, what the team is and what they're going to do. All those people out there don't know what you're talking about. And I open up the phone lines quite often, but I never see those cowards. But they always seem to be trolling on Twitter. Don't give me that stuff like, oh, I write these profound tweets. But then when I call you out and tell you to call the show, well, I, I don't do that. I, I don't like what the hell? Like, oh, you can give your opinion there, but you don't have the balls to come on the show and tell everybody how you feel. So you're a troll. So for all those trolls out there and those people that suffer from St. Stockholm Syndrome, you're an idiot. If you don't look at the fact that this team, there is something going on. This team is trying to play dress rehearsal. And I understand. And at this point, I do not care. Because it's already been confirmed a long time ago that... My talent has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that, you know, you know, anything, you know what I'm saying? Like, so the reality is no matter what I say, you know, it's not going to get me, you know what I'm saying? What I feel like I deserve, but at the end of the day, we all know the truth. And my words may end up, like I said, may never get me to reaching what I really feel like, you know, I deserve, which is, you know, access and as a reporter to be able to cover this team, you know, on a more personal basis, which I don't give a damn. You know, I I don't care if that means that I have to, you know, keep it, keep it closed. 
I, I got to act like these th situations don't exist. I got to kiss the organization's ass. In order for me to get access, you can have all that. I'd rather be the man of the people. I'd rather be the person that's sitting on in the background that know that I have the ability, but, you know, people don't want to hear the truth. The truth is Dennis Allen is a lame duck coach. The truth is these guys do not believe in Dennis Allen. The truth is there's an issue going on with the Saints organization. And if you don't believe me, let's go ahead and take a look at something that Michael Thomas said on Twitter. I know some people say, well, Michael Thomas, you know, he just upset. He just bitter that the Saints got rid of him. Yeah, live in whatever world that y'all want to live in for all those people out there that just try to put their mind at ease. Yes, the guy is just so upset. The fact that he just made $100 million as an NFL player, but he's bitter that a team that hasn't made the playoffs in three years don't want him anymore. Yeah, whatever, whatever floats your boat, whatever floats your boat. But Michael Thomas, Michael Thomas said this on Twitter. He says, it's because we're not yes men, so we're cancers. But under a winning coach, we are looking differently, and it's a mentality, and it makes losers uncomfortable because they use – to losing all their careers. Now, this this particular tweet came a couple of weeks ago, and people were like, "You know what, man? Man, this dude just bitter. Man, this dude just bitter. Man, he just hating. He just hating on the team." But let me make sure that I'm pulling up this tweet from most recently. That happened on today. It was in regards to some of the issues that were going on with the team. It was it was a tweet that he he put out here. I, let me make sure that I'm going to uh, go and find it, but it's, I'm going to just paraphrase it here. He was uh, basically talking about how Dennis Allen is a robot. He basically says the same thing. It's rinse and repeat. It's, it's rinse and repeat over and over again. And I'm going to read an article. This, this article right here, it comes from uh, the Daily Mail, okay? And it talks about Michael Thomas blasting the medical staff at the New Orleans Saints, claiming... They give every player the same rehab exercises regardless of their injury amid Ryan Ramchek setback. It says former New Orleans Saint. Let me make sure I put I'm gonna put it up on the screen so y'all can check it out too. And thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all for being here. I really do appreciate that. I really do appreciate that. Let me go ahead and I'm gonna put this up on the screen so everybody can see it. Uh, let me make sure. Okay, so here we go. All right, so. Let me go ahead so everybody can share. I mean, so I can share with everybody. Let's put it up on the screen here. All right, so here we go. It says, former New Orleans Saint wide receiver Michael Thomas blasts the medical staff of former team on social media Tuesday, claiming that they give every injured player the same rehab exercise. The harsh criticism comes after it was reported that the Saints offensive lineman Ryan Ramchick may not be clear to play this season because of a knee injury. Says due to the major knee injury in 2021 and last year, Ryan Ramchick future is unclear. With Thomas placing a blame on the Saints head coach, Dennis Allen and the New Orleans medical staff. Thomas claims uh, come less than two weeks after he was released by the New Orleans Saints after playing for them since 2016. The 31-year-old Thomas is currently a free agent. It says, and this is his tweet. It says, well, when you get an injury, they they build you a little file folder for rehab that's supposed to help you return to play, Thomas said on X. But in reality, it's all the same rehab exercises and procedures, regardless if it's an ankle, a knee, a wrist, etc. It's called insanity. Thomas also directed uh, directly slammed Allen claiming that the team's head coach bears responsibility in alleged situations. It's like he uses the same line and just changes the players' names, as if there isn't a team doctor and trainer on staff that has nothing to do with it, Thomas says. They're trying to protect them as much as possible, but hey, don't mind me. I don't work there no more, but that's the real problem. Once again, that's coming from Michael Thomas of the New Orleans Saints. So there you have it right there, folks. Now, some people will probably say, like I said, they would say, well, Michael Thomas, he ain't playing like three years. He bitter. He hating. He don't want the Saints to succeed. He don't want, he don't want Dennis Allen to succeed. You got some clowns on here, really. 
I, I, I just seen something on social media, man. I could not believe what I was saying. I wish I could just pull it joint up. Matter of fact, I will pull this joint up because I feel extremely, extremely petty on this, this episode. So let me go ahead and pull up the insanity that some of these people are, uh, are putting up here. Let me make sure I put, let me make sure I, I let me see if I can find this real quick because I'm feeling petty today. You, you got, you got ridiculousness like this coming to my, my feed. Ridiculousness like this. Let me let me go ahead and pull this up. I hope y'all can see this. I hope people can see this. This 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 ridiculous right here. Here's the thing: because they're engaged in a soft rebuild, Allen is far more likely to stay longer to see it through to the other side. Loomis says as much as they stated this two-year plan with the cap reset. I expect Allen to be here three to five years. I don't know if people like really believe this stuff, or they just like say this though because they feel like it's probably going to get attention which it did somebody said that's absurd loomis an organization saw him in 2008 to 2010 and then brought him back in 2016 let's let's stop right there how much of a how much of a fool do you have to be in order for you to do this so from what he did in 2008 to 2010 that's the reason why they brought him back in 2016 as a defensive coordinator nobody's criticizing Dennis Allen as a defensive coordinator. He is one of the best. But just like Steve Spagnola, just like Wade Phillips, they're great defensive coordinators, but as head coaches, as leaders of men, they're not good at their job. He continues. He says, they saw his approach, his organization, etc. They believe in him and are doing the things to make him successful. What about him doing the things to make himself successful? Once again, why are we using the Vince McMahon, uh, you know, logic in order to try to build up Dennis Allen? Vince McMahon, the promoter of WWE, he takes a, a person like Hulk Hogan. He takes a person like Roman Reigns. He takes a person like John Cena and he creates these characters and he makes these people like him. They sell the merchandise. They, they put them at the forefront. It's rather you got it or you don't. And this guy does not have it. Why are you trying to put these things around him? To make him look the part. That is the question. But of course, this guy thinks he's cooking. He says Loomis is not some egomaniac to believe he is above mistakes. Oh, he's not, right? So that was the reason why they kept P. Carmichael around when they knew. Watching this guy for 14 years, who was really cooking in that kitchen? who knew that Pete Carmichael was more of a behind-the-scenes guy, but instead tried to sell him to the masses. You had a 14-year sample size to know what type of coordinator, a guy who is going to be calling plays, game in, game out, week in, week out. You knew who he was. But instead of you pivoting, moving on, when this guy told you that he was not the guy, no, no. You, you just don't believe in yourself. Well, that's a start. That's a start. If a guy doesn't believe in himself, how the hell is anybody going to believe in him? But of course, we're supposed to believe that Mickey Loomis has all the answers. We're supposed to believe that Mickey Loomis didn't go on WWL radio midway through the season and says, I really feel that we have the right people in the building. Well, somebody please tell me, where the hell are those people at? Because I don't see him. I see a turnover defensively back in 2022 and an overhaul, an overhaul in 2023 going into 2024. That's what I saw. So if you got the right people in the building and I'm supposed to take his word at face value, why am I looking at things differently? Why are they showing me different coaches where, where you're telling me there were guys that you actually believed in? But of course, this is too much like sense. I can't think like this because if I think like this, that means that I'm not a real Saints fan. Well, guess what? Live in a world of delusion, in a world of Saints Stockholm Syndrome all you want to. But I am done. I am done with this, man. If it means that I never get an opportunity to cover this team, it is what it is. I do not care. I am not going to sugarcoat this. This is ridiculous. This is the second time we've seen a, a football player on a New Orleans Saints team 
call out the medical staff and talk about some of the practices that took place. Well, TJ, why, why, why does it seem like Michael Thomas the only person saying something? Michael Thomas the only one on Twitter tweeting. Let me tell y'all something. I wish I had the footage. I wish I had it, and I'm probably going to have it next episode. I remember when Michael Thomas was criticizing Derek Carr during the game. Y'all think everybody remember that. It, 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 made, it made huge headlines, especially around New Orleans. And they went and they asked Alvin Kamara. They asked Alvin Kamara. They was like, what do you think about uh, some of the things that Michael Thomas said? He didn't go out here and say, well, you know, I like Mike. Maybe he's just upset about being hurt. Like some of y'all want to believe. He basically, he basically co-signed it. He was like, yeah, I can understand the frustration and some of the things that's going on and how he feels. I am going to try to really look for that footage so I can show you people. But of course, nah, that ain't it. That ain't it. He bitter. He bitter, man. He just mad because he hurt his ankle back in 2020 and haven't been the same player since. Y'all really honestly believe that a guy who has made $100 million is going to be bitter about anything. He has absolutely nothing to do but to sit up here. This man has $100 million. And I'm pretty sure he's going to be playing on another NFL team this season. So why in the world would he just sit up here and just you just feel like he just bitter and just wants to just blow the whole thing up? He doesn't even have to say anything. Michael Thomas doesn't have to say a damn thing. He doesn't. Michael Thomas doesn't have to talk. He doesn't have to say anything. We all see it. We all know what's going on. So why are we sitting up here trying to pretend? Trying to pretend like this ain't happening. I, I just do not understand this. I don't. It, it is absolutely a, a disgrace. It's disgraceful. That, that you have people that do not and refuse to see the forest through the tree. I, I, just, I just don't understand I, I, man, it, it is it is absolutely un unbelievable the way that th this is this is taking place. This is the second time the medical staff of the New Orleans Saints have been questioned. But you have people out here. Well, this a former this a this a old that was the old medical staff. They got a new medical staff. Let me ask y'all a question. Let me ask y'all a question before I get to the comments. Let me ask y'all a question. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. All right, this organization, right, the New Orleans Saints. You had some medical personnel on your team that you fired. You, you fired Dr. S or S Suri and Dr. Jones. No relation. You fired these two individuals, right? So the reputation is already there. The reputation was already put out there. You misdiagnosed, rather you want to, you know, put an article out there saying it wasn't a misdiagnosis, whatever type of, red tape or whatever lines you want to blur you misdiagnosed this dude you said that he had a leg contusion i'm talking delvin bro and a man had a broken fibula had had sean payton walking by this guy rolling his eyes thinking this man quit but he couldn't even walk this has been a practice that you have seen now all of a sudden oh they got rid of those people so they don't have the capability of doing this again, would they? Right? So if you take a person who is known for being a stalker, looking in people's windows, right? Looking in people's windows, looking at them, watching TV or whatever they're doing. He gets caught. He said, they say, man, this guy's been looking through people's windows. He's a stalker. Well, Let's go ahead and get kick him out the neighborhood and he goes somewhere else. I mean, different environment, same practices. You know, like, if, if, like, how do people understand this? How are people so sure that, how are people so sure that this isn't what it is? If you have seen that it has the capability of going on. So why you dismiss this? I know why. It's because people do not want to accept that the things that they love, that the things that they cherish are not as on the up and up as you think. So we try to pretend. We try to whistle through the graveyard, so to speak. 
We try to pretend like these things don't exist, but they do. And I'm telling you right now, I take no pride, no pride in disrespecting my favorite team. Like I said at the beginning of the podcast, I have been watching this team since I was four years old. Since I was four. I love this football team. Reason why I do this podcast and have been doing this podcast since 2018. But I don't give a damn who it is. I don't care if it's my mother, my wife, my son. Hell, me. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And if my if they're wrong, they're wrong. And we got to call it out. I'm not going to pretend that it don't exist. This is, this is ridiculous practices, but this is modern society. Because somebody comes with imperfections, we don't believe them. Michael Thomas has been hurt for the last three years, so he can be blowing the whistle. But because he's been hurt and you've been disappointed by him because maybe he was on your fantasy team or maybe the Saints have been losing and maybe if Michael Thomas was out there, they wouldn't lose. So you actually wrap that up into your narrative. Do you know how many people lose their lives? Do you know how many people get hurt? Because people don't like the presentation. Even though... The, the entire, you know, the, the entire product itself might be on up and up. We don't like the presentation. So we just basically just throw it away. I, I just don't understand it. But you can live in that society. You can live in that world, but I'm not. Yeah, I, I'm not. I am not. I am not living like that. So if that means that... <laughs> I, like I said, I, it calls me opportunity for access. If that means that it causes me opportunities for other things, well, look, I'm okay with that because I do not care. I, 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 can't, I cannot do that. I cannot do it. I'm not going to do it to the people that support this podcast, support me, has seen the development of this podcast. I am not going to do it. So that's that other show. I ain't calling no other show out, but... That's that other show. That ain't this show. And we'll just leave it at that. Let me go ahead and read some of these comments, man. As y'all can see, I'm pretty fired up right now. Because uh, it, it is just absolutely ridiculous how people just turn a blind eye to things that are right in their face. It's, it's reality. Oh, uh, Ryan, uh, someone has to stop the bleeding or it will uh, get ugly. I think this is the season. I say what? I'll tell you what. Um, like dude said, if if it's a three to five year plan with Dennis Allen, I can tell you what, it's gonna be you're gonna have a lot of Saints fans that are gonna end up like probably watching some other team because man, they're gonna have to change some things. They're gonna have to change some things. Then like I said, they might end up winning football games this season. They might end up being better than we thought. But to me, it's not sustainable success because you're, you're basically masquerading this guy as a head coach and you're just putting things around him to make him look the part. But what happens when th those things are no longer there? What happens? I'll tell you what happened. They go right back to the same way that they were. Pull up the footage, TJ. Yeah, I'm going to have to find it. I'm going to have to find it, uh, Jerry. I'm going to put it up on next, next episode. Yep, seeing that video too, TJ, is crazy. Yeah, I mean, like, that, that was the opportunity right there for Mike, uh, for Alvin to really call out Mike and say, you know, I don't know about all that. But he kind of co-signed. He was like, yeah, I can understand, like, his frustration. I, I, can, I, I think he had some points. He said that. But nah, this man bitter, man. This man, this, this man is bitter. This is, this is a bitter man that we talking about here. Michael Thomas is the most bitter man in the world. It, it, it's amazing, right? Man, he just upset, man. He he been hurt. He like, man, this man make a this man got a hundred million dollars. Hundred million dollars right now. <laughs> yeah, but he bitter. Yeah, the Broncos. Yeah, it probably will end up on the Broncos, but still he gonna be in the NFL. Finally, um, I'm getting the live broadcast. Hey TJ, did you hear that Cam had surgery too? No, I didn't hear about uh Cam Jordan having surgery, but um, you know, it was pretty obvious that Cam was dealing with some, uh, some, some issues last season, which is, uh, you know, he was, he was playing through it. He's a tough guy. Um, he's a warrior as we know, but you know, I hope he has a speedy recovery. 
uh, they projecting how they feel on Mike T. Well, look, I, I look, I don't. I'm gonna tell you this, Barbara. You can say how, you can feel however you want about Mike T. You can you can believe whatever you want. You can say whatever you want. Injuries occur. Injuries happen to guys. And you know, I really just feel like this dude is is honestly being real, being honest. And here's the thing. Here here's the here's the thing where what people need to understand, right? If this man was a liar, if this man was just out here just putting up and selling wolf tickets, why on Twitter, on X, none of the other teammates come out here and say some of the things that we're saying? Why is it? Like, why, like I've seen, I, I mean, I've, been, I've been watching football for a long time, been on social media for a long time. I've seen where guys have taken shots at organizations, at players, and other players on the team will call them out. Well, man, look, look, it ain't just them. That's you too, blah, 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 blah. So why is it that this dude ain't being called out to a point where, you know, you, you're seeing it from other teammates? I'm just, I'm just wondering. Like, if this man just sitting up here, bad, you know what I'm saying, bashing the organization, no validity behind what he's saying, why is it that nobody else is calling them out? I, I'm, I just want to know. Why is it that Alvin Kamara basically didn't dismiss his, his comments, but basically kind of, you know, reassured everybody, like, he, he ain't as insane as y'all y'all think he is? Why is it? He could have dispelled that narrative right then and there, but he didn't. Why would he do that? If if he if there was no validity behind what he's saying, then why would Dennis Allen be ranked number twenty nine among head coaches? Why? I'm just want like if if this if it's all Mike T just being upset and hating on the organization, why is he the only coach ranked as low as he is still have a job? Somebody please explain that to me. But you're not, because what you're doing right now is trying to find a way to move the goalpost. It is time to wake up. It is time for you to realize that maybe this guy isn't as crazy as you think. And there's some there's some levels of validity behind what he's saying. So I don't know what to tell you if you don't want to buy it. And honestly, if you if you don't, I don't care. I don't care. TJ, people will ignore a message that is 100% facts <clears throat> just because they don't like how it was said or who delivered it. Exactly. That's my whole point, Ken Arthur. We, we don't, look, we don't accept the gift if it don't come in the right package. We want the gift to, to be without spot nor blemish. We want a golden ribbon. We want beautiful wrapping paper. That, that's what we want. You can have keys to a Mercedes Benz, fully loaded, and it can come in a box from Amazon that looked like it got stepped on. You know, like one of them boxes that, you know, normally uh, Amazon just barely have it at, at the bottom, maybe something bigger crusted, and they lay it on your front porch. But you don't care, do you? Because it matters what's inside. At least it should. But no, no, not the way we he, not the way we get information. Not in 2024. It got to come without spot nor blemish. A person be, can be telling you gospel, but because back in 2009, this man stole a bag of hot Cheetos when he was 15. I don't want to hear what he got to say. We. <laughs> We got to, man, honestly, we may not like the rapper, but sometimes the gift is worth it. So I don't know. Look, that's, that's the best that's the best analogy I can give you. That's the best analogy I can give you here on the State of the Saints podcast. Says uh, need to score more points. Average. Need to, yeah, I, I think they'll, honestly, I think they'll score more points in 2024. What did Mike T say? I'm going to just tell you to be kind and rewind. <laughs> uh, that's true, TJ. Uh, if he isn't saying uh, stuff, 
uh that isn't true someone on the team will speak out for the team nobody is saying anything that's my whole point and anytime they ask him about mike t man we like mike t we, have, we respect mike t he's he's our guy i don't feel nobody talking about oh man mike t he can get a little crazy at times if if, if they say that he get a little crazy they talking about his work ethic and the way that he performs on the field like he crazy but when it comes to like some of the feelings that he have you know i mean I ain't never heard nobody just say, man, this dude here tripping, man. He just upset that he ain't playing. Come on, man. Come on. Uh, let's see. Josh plus H plus E says the T H E T H R minus. I, I guess you say <laughs> he said the truth. Let's see. Uh, bro, Mickey got to go. Literally just restructured uh, Rams deal a month ago. Literally pays the man for years now because of it it's insane well i can tell you this first off i already said at the top of the show and i'm, I'm gonna say this man when it comes to ryan Ramchek, i'm a little biased because i think that he's an incredibly talented offensive lineman and if he was if he wasn't dealing with no knee injury he'll probably be on his way to the hall of fame he would prop like you know probably he'd be the best right tackle in football I'm more concerned about Ryan Ramchek, the human being, than Ryan Ramchek as the offensive lineman. I, I mean this, man. I, I really, I if it comes down to the fact that he really has to second guess playing football, or you know, not being able to play with his kids, or be able to run, or be able like this is a young guy we talking about here. Ryan Ramchek got to be like 29, 30, maybe. He's a young man. He got the rest of his life ahead of him. And I, I, don't, I wouldn't want to see Ryan Ramchek go out like that. Not just so we can solidify the right side of the offensive line. Like, honestly, I'd rather the Saints, you know what I'm saying, offensive line look like tissue paper, knowing that Ryan Ramchek can play with his kids, that he can be able to live throughout his life. You know, I mean, you're going to have some, some issues. You're playing football for the majority of your young life. But to a point where he can actually enjoy his life, and don't have like those little lingering issues to a point where it just consumes him on and, and affects his every day. That's the way I feel. It's just sad that we're even at this point. It's sad that, you know, like we, we know what's going on. Like we, we know what's happening. We know what's happening now. Right. And I, I don't know, man. I just, I, I, I just, I just hope that this guy is okay. I, I don't like, honestly, you got hundreds of offensive linemen that, you know what I'm saying, that you could choose from, right? I mean, that, like, that, that's going to be, like, if it don't happen this year, there's going to be a new crop next year, year after that. But I'm more concerned about Ryan Ramchek as, as the person. But I understand what you're talking about, Scout. They should have did their due diligence, uh, you know, knowing what the issue was with Ryan Ramchek. I get all that, but... Man, it just like it is off because he is a a whipping boy for Mickey. I don't know what I don't know what he is, and if he if he's that, then he definitely needs to go. I'm over this, man. Like for real, like I'm over it trying to figure out what's you know what's going on. I'm I'm tired of like sugarcoating stuff. I guess like a part of me was like, I don't really don't want to go there. Sometimes you know I do it. it depends on how frustrating it, it gets, but. At this point, I do not care. I I, I do not care, man. It, it needs to be said. And I, I'm not one of the people. I, I can't hold my tongue. I can try to convince myself to do it, but eventually I'm going to say what I got to say. And this is ridiculous right here. And like I said, if my words means that I, I never be able to get, you know, access to being a part of, you know what I'm saying, like covering a team the way that I want to, the way I feel like, you know, I deserve to do it, you know, I mean, I honestly – I tell you, like some of you may not uh, know, I, I was told that my 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 stuff was good, you know, like the followers that I had was good. I had a good following, but they just didn't want me to do it. And why? I can tell you why. It's because of my my honesty. And if honest and, and truthfully, if that means that I never step foot inside the facility to cover the team, that's fine by me, because I ain't trying to look. I don't feel like, oh, I'm just being real here. Like, I'm like, I'm just, I'm just, I, I just can't sugarcoat. I, I can't. I can't do it. 
I, I can't do it. Won't do it. They ain't, they ain't got a check that can be written for me to do that. I, I, I would hate to look at myself in the mirror if I was coming on here being disingenuous. And if I have to be that guy, if I, you know, if, if this is who I am, this, this, this is who I am. I can't change that. You know, and it is what it is. I mean, honestly, like I said, I, I was all I was already told, you know, by the by the uh by somebody within the organization. You know, because yeah, you know, <laughs> I could be, I could be, you know, sometimes I could be a little bit too honest, but I'd rather be too honest than too fake. Uh what's that and TJ? Do you think uh uh with Rams new injury uh will slide pin into right tackle? Could be a possibility, or you could probably put James Hurst there and uh, put Trevor Penning at left guard. But, I mean, you still got the same issues, if you want to be honest. If you slide uh, Trevor Penning to the right side, well, what you think they're going to do? They're just going to take their best pass rusher and put it over there by Penning. Still, same thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, least Cordell Patterson out the south. Good riddance. Uh, M and F was a pain in the ass in the division. Yeah, he was, but they they didn't really know what to do with him anyway. If you notice, like his production was starting to drop, and they started featuring more Tyler Algier and B John. So he'll find somewhere to go, and he'll be uh he'll be a factor. We like the Lakers. Well, I don't really cover basketball or really watch it like this, so I, I couldn't tell you what the 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 comparisons are. Uh, Mickey is acting like Jerry Jones. He doesn't respect D.A. like he respected Sean. I don't want to say he don't respect Dennis Allen. I don't I don't think that is is about him not respecting Dennis Allen. I think I think this is more about him feeling, you know, wanting to prove to people that he was just as instrumental in the same success than Sean as Sean Payton was. Uh, and I, I really feel like this whole. Dennis Allen thing is he don't want to admit that he was wrong. So what he going to do is, you know, he going to take it any way he want to. He going he going to shoot ball, he going to shoot the ball from underneath the rim here. He going to put a bunch of uh, really talented coaches around him and if the Saints start winning, he going to start come walking in the press conference with his chest high like he told everybody he knew it all alone. Like come on man, like Milli Vanilli. That's all I can say. Milli Vanilli. Right? You know, like, yeah, the, the songs was a jam, right? Girl, you know it's true. Hey. You, ooh, ooh, I love. Yeah, but it wasn't them singing. You know, like, they, they were jamming, though. Girl, you know it's true. Y'all know, y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about, man. They were jamming. I mean, at least that black guy that was, that was singing a song was jamming. But it looked like they were jamming, too, right? But in reality... There were just two, there were just two guys from Germany or France or whatever the hell they were from. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like eventually they, they got exposed. Just like I feel like no matter what infrastructure you put around Dennis Allen, eventually he'll be exposed. Sooner rather than later. But this is all this is all for Mickey to take a victory lap. I told y'all, I told y'all, come in there chewing the, the extra sugar-free gum ready to talk, ready to take questions then, right? Ready to take questions to deflect them, just like he always do. Yeah, yeah, you know, we, 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 we're going to work that out, yeah. You know, like, come on, man. Give me a freaking break. Yeah, that's a good point, TJ. Uh, how about the new kickoff rule for the 2024 season? Yeah, you're going to see more uh, kick returns. You're going to see more kick returns, so I guess that's a plus. Keep some of these special teamers in in – you know, what a job. Uh, our medical staff is the reason Drew retired. He was seriously injured and played through it. Uh, he lost full range of motion in his throwing arm because of it and had to call it quits. Well, I'm going to say this. Uh, Mira, I don't know if I too much believe that the medical staff had anything to do with Drew Brees' career coming to an end. I mean, Drew Brees had a freak uh rotator cuff injury like that was that was freaky you know what i'm saying like i don't know if y'all ever seen like um y'all remember that time when that dude uh ran on stage to try to attack dave Chappelle and then and the whole like a bunch of celebrities just stomped that boy out and did y'all see his picture and like how his arm was like just you know that was like drew you know what i'm saying that's how drew on was 
when he was walking, he couldn't even put that joint down. And, you know, shouts out to Dr. James Andrews, LSU alumni. Uh, you know, he, he, he put it back together. It was a very, very touchy surgery. I mean, that just showed you how great Dr. James Andrews is with, with that, uh, uh, you know, cutting folk and, you know, knowing these uh, different surgeries. But it was only a matter of time. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he's had those injuries and he's going to continue to have them. When people have surgery, I, I think sometimes we have we have this thought like, oh, they had the surgery. Oh, they ain't never going to bother them for the rest of their life. Sure. <sighs> okay. All right. How many people out there that had knee surgery? Years ago, knee still bothered Shoulder surgery, shoulder still bothered Neck surgery, neck still bothered They could, They could probably fix it and, and have you being mobile for a short period of time or probably some years. But eventually... But eventually, you know what? It's going to end up, you know, hurting and you're going to have like maybe, uh, you know, I won't say long term effects, but, you know, it might affect it might end up like affecting you, you know, for a while. So I, I don't think that had anything to do with it. I, I think that, uh, you know, it was just it was just Drew's time. LMAO, that damn Mickey impression is spot on. Man, we know Mickey. I call man. We we know Mickey Loomis is the deflector. I call him Mickey the deflector. Mickey Loomis has a way of sounding like he's saying something and ain't saying nothing at all. I mean, it's it's an art. Like the way he does it, like it's almost it, it leaves you in awe. Like oh my god, like man, this dude like really talked for like three minutes and said absolutely nothing. I mean, that, that's an art right there. I give him that. That that is that is art. Everybody can't just be talking and talking and talking and talking and not say nothing, you know. And and people just up there like, you know, what exactly, you know, <laughs> make it seem like he's, it's so profound, profoundly nothing. Uh, my shoulder is horrible. Uh, I don't even really mess with uh free weights anymore. Like I said, man, you those those surgeries and having these injuries, they they have long term, they have long term effects on them. Uh, lawyer talk, TJ. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, Mickey Loomis was a lawyer. Get rid of that gum. Get that gum out your mouth. <laughs> Loomis plays, uh, those, uh, pays those contracts, not the coaches. Loomis is general manager, builds a team, does the uh, the money, hires the coach. He literally uh, restructured a car and ram this year. Yeah, I mean, but. It's a. I'm pretty sure Dennis Allen is instrumental in some of the the additions to the team, but I don't think he has that much pull and cash as Sean did. You st uh, still stealing Nick Underhill's content, man. <laughs> um, okay, if you say so. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it was bad, but uh, it seems uh like they rushed him back to me. I wanted him to play too uh through uh if i'm um being honest with uh that rib injury him being able to uh do play as well as he did was impressive yeah i mean yeah it was pretty it was pretty uh impressive uh this man dennis allen putting all the chips in on Derek carr and will get rid of anyone who threatens his job just uh, like james uh we could have uh had justin fields for a bag of skittles <laughs> Why are you, what are you doing with that duct tape? Man, put that duct tape down. Yeah. <laughs> All right, hold on. We we about to finish up, okay, buddy? We finishing up. Let's see. Uh, Drew should have retired after the the Rams no call game. I I agree with you know. I agree with that. I agree with that. Uh, no trolls allowed. Uh, says uh, I, I find it I find it funny at this point. There's you know there there's there's nothing like you know. I, from what I see, to be honest with you, no disrespect. Like I don't even, I don't even, I don't even watch Nick Underhill's podcast like that. Like unless like something is like they have like some interviews or something like that, or something that you know they they may have like content that I didn't see. I'll probably check it out, but I don't, I don't even, I don't even understand the comparison. I don't even I, like, I, I don't, I find that funny. You know, but that's just people that probably don't look at the podcast. 
probably think that you know a black guy you know what I'm saying has to bite off a white dude you know what I'm saying I don't know you know <laughs> I don't know but I, I think I, I I think I'm pretty creative without having to you know bite from Nick under here what y'all think and no disrespect to Nick, like I said, I got nothing but love for Nick under here. Like we, you know, we had little, you know, little issue back in the day, but we resolved it. But I don't think, I don't think my was anything like, or I don't think I'm anything like Nick under here. Uh, let's see, uh, TJ, they scared of me or uh, what? Uh, time out or hitting them? Well, look, I appreciate that, man. But that doesn't bother me at all. Like when, when you know. The gifts God give gave you, when you know that, you know the the talent that God have, that put inside of you, like why would you be sitting up here thinking or, or even give that like the time of day? I, I think that's a, I, I just find I find that like super hilarious. That's not that doesn't even bother me. TJ, I love the soccer backyard of you done for your son. I know you're a historian. I took my son to the Black uh, History Museum in D.C. Great experience. I'm sure you like. Uh, if you haven't been now, I haven't been there, but I, I would love to go there. I'm, I'm real big on history. Was a history major before I switched it to communications. Uh, says uh, it's only a limited amount of topics you can talk about when it comes to specific sports team. Eventually, they all will touch on the same subject. Yeah, I mean, touch on the same subject, but I don't like honestly, I don't think I don't think I'm like anybody else. Other, you know, podcast. I, I don't because. Like I, I mean this no, with no disrespect. Like, I see a topic through, like, articles or something like that, right? Uh, through an article. I don't even look at other people's stuff because I don't want my points of views to kind of be tainted. I go back afterwards and go look at other people's stuff. But, and like I said, man, you know, people can't fathom the fact that I come out of nowhere. I've never been in anybody's newsroom. I've never like had to climb the uh you know those channels that everybody else does saying what well however i go to, i went to the senior bowl i went to the combine you know i could have had opportunity to go to the nfl draft and all of that through like just starting this podcast in 2018 see people can't fathom that they think that you have to steal from somebody in order for you to do it but like i said when you know the talent that you possess and anybody you know and the people that have been rocking with this podcast from the beginning you already know. Like what, you know, that, that that doesn't even make sense. Cause if you think about it, like I actually started this podcast before Nick Underhill started New Orleans Football anyway. And like I said, the format from what from the shows that I have seen, you know, it's not even similar. Uh let's see, is that Pac-Man he getting big? Yeah, that's the Pac-Man back there. Uh says uh, the little man is soaking it all in, great role model. Yeah, man, look, anytime, you know, I can be able to, like, you know, be, you know, I because I, my son spends a lot of time with me, like, when he's not in school, we go to the radio station together, so he, he spends a lot of time, like, you know, seeing me, like, kind of do production stuff. Been here since day one, TJ. Yeet. Exactly. Appreciate that, Jerry. And like I said, man, this is, this ain't a shot at, at nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't taking no shots at nobody. I ain't got no time for that. But I I don't, you know. I don't I don't try to take anybody ideas. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like yeah, I, I just don't. Let's see, uh, let's see. J Bag Drew <laughs> throws with his left on hand now, though. He can barely use the right arm. Yeah, that's 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 awful. Let's see, uh, how long is management going to kick the can down the road? I don't know, but they're gonna have to figure this thing out. They're gonna have to figure this thing out, man. Wish you could have been in that uh, the end of the season press conference with Mickey Loomis. Nah, they ain't let me in that joint, bro. They ain't let me in there. They ain't gonna let me in there. They ain't gonna let me in there. Because I'm, I'm gonna ask the question that nobody wanna ask. And it probably would have been like the last time I've been in the press conference. I ain't gonna get mad or nothing, but you know, sometimes when people start asking certain questions, you know, it's kind of like a uh, shout out to my buddy Jim Trotter, man. You know, when he asked that question about, you know, Roger Goodell and, and you know, some of the, you know, black, you know, say like <laughs> the question, you know, people looked at as being too black, you know, and all of a sudden, like he ends up like losing his credentials there. Like, OK, uh, Mike is a punk. Yeah, that's your that's your opinion. That's your opinion. If you, you believe that he's a punk, I don't. 
I don't believe you're a punk. Uh, I hear reading that story, man. Sad stuff. Says the Saints are in a good position in this draft. Yeah. Yeah, which leads me to my last point. Then we're going to go ahead and get up out of here, man. Got on my soapbox. Got one more point that I wanted to bring up. Well, two, actually. Um, This this one right here kind of coincides with the question that was – uh, well, the comment that was made. It is about pass catches. Check this out. <clears throat> so I thought that was a, a good piece. I certainly think that's some, an area, you know, in terms of a pass catcher, uh, not necessarily a wide receiver, but a pass catcher, um, is, is something that we're going to, you know, continue to look at. And um, I feel better about our depth now than I did a month ago, you know. But, uh, um, yeah, but I think that's still probably a position that we're, we'll, we'll look to see if we can't find somebody to add. Yeah, so as you can see, he's trying to uh, find another pass catcher, which probably makes a lot of members of the Huda Nation excited uh, because, you know, there's a chance that they can possibly get Brock Bowers. Um, Brock Bowers, the tight end, because you, you heard him say it don't necessarily have to be a wide receiver. So if it's not a wide receiver, who else catching the football? A running back? Probably not going to do that in 14. So that's, that's possibly Dennis Allen saying something without saying something. So Brock Bowers may be on the radar of the New Orleans Saints. So, who who knows, you know? That, that'll be pretty cool, like, if they can get Brock Bowers. Uh, he's a talented guy. Of course, we know about his career at Georgia. So, and a lot of people are comparing him uh, to George Kittle. And uh, if he can come in and provide that spark, man, that'll be dope. Literally watch him grow from day one. Y'all, uh, my extended family, TJ, said Cartel. Yeah, man, my little man uh, growing up, man. He about to be five years old in May, so... Yeah, man, it's, it's amazing. Like, just going back and watching old episodes with him on there. Uh, the Saints organization don't like sports reporters who will ask the tough questions or call them out. Well, you know, I kind of figured that out anyway because, you know, when they do, like, different press conferences and, like, major NFL functions, they normally, like, do them off to the side. Like, this, this, this one right here is a little bit different. But if you go to, like, the Senior Bowl or the Combine, they they don't even do they don't even do press conferences like how coaches do them like how the coaches go to the podium they don't even do that like what they do is they they text they text different reporters and you know what I'm saying tell them where they're gonna be at meet meet right here so it can be like the same people so that that's the reason why you know you hear like the same folk because other people don't get opportunities to do that so it kind of you know it, it's kind of it, it, it's like a I hate to say it. It's like a country club mentality. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's only a, a few people that, you know, have that particular access, and they're okay with that, for the exception of, like, when they have, like, primetime games on Thursday night or, or you know, Sunday night or something like that, you'll probably have uh, NFL reporters there, you know, that kind of travel. Uh, you know, they'll probably be in there. But for the most part, if they have, like, different press conferences, it's off to the side because, you know, they want to be able to, like, I won't say control the narrative, but kind of, you know, dictate things. They, they, they don't like, you know, they don't like unfamiliar faces from, from what I hear. But that's just me. Uh, mute whenever he speaks. <laughs> uh, can I have a lick, Jerry? I don't know what that's about. Uh, does, it, does it need to catch deep and need somebody uh, on intermediate routes? I agree with that. They, they need, but I think a guy like Brock Bowers would be great for him. He don't catch immediate either. Uh, five, damn, Uncle Jerry getting old. Yeah, man, he get about to be five on yo. I watch every target from last year. He catches screens in the short game. I, I like the fact, what I like about Brock Bowers is when he catches the ball, he becomes a running back. And um, that's I, there, there's only a few guys that I see, like when they catch the ball, they be turned into a running back. It's Brandon Marshall, George Kittle, Travis Kelsey has a little bit of that. Tyreek, Tyreek, uh, he, he just burns you with the speed, but he can't, you know, he's like, he's like the athletic running back. There's very, very few guys that basically turn into a running back. You see the stiff arms, uh, you see him waiting for the blocks, you know, that that's, uh, you know, Brock Bowers kind of possesses that too. Uh, you write about that TJ says, uh, Dennis Allen coach, uh, pitcher with Carolina colors. <laughs> Uh, TJ, it's a lot of people with keyboard courage in the chat knowing they wouldn't disrespect these uh, people in their faces. Pathetic. Yeah, I mean, I don't know exactly uh, 
what you was uh, alluding to, King Arthur. But look, I, I, I don't know if you're talking about it from my perspective, but I don't, man, I don't feel, I don't feel disrespected. I, I don't. That, like I said, that stuff don't even, that stuff don't even bother me. You know, it bothers it, it bothers me when people think that I, you know, like I said, that I still like, like you ain't got the talent or the ability to be able to carry a show for an hour and six minutes by yourself without using somebody else's content. You know, and maybe you know what I'm saying it was the clips that came from NewOrleansSaints.com, which uh, you know. With Saints PR, you know what I'm saying, already basically told me a while back that I, you know, I can use certain clips in order to, for the podcast. So they did that for you, boy. Says, uh, TJ, I was talking about the two by four uh, on DA. Oh, okay. <laughs> Brock reminds me of Kittle and Gronk. Yeah, I, more like Kittle than uh, Gronk, in my opinion. Percy Harbin used to run like that, too. Yeah, Percy Harbin was special, man. He had them migraines that kind of shortened his career. Uh, who trolling, son? I don't know. Uh, some guy that was in the chat says, uh, bruh, uh, Percy was a freak. Wish he never got hurt. Well, uh, you know, he had those migraines. It wasn't the fact that he was hurt. He just had to deal with uh, migraine headaches real bad. Won't surprise me to try to trade Juwan Johnson after the statement by DA, trade Juwan to another team, and dra uh, draft Bowers might be in the plans. Well, I mean, if you can get Brock Bowers – I like Jawan Johnson, but they're, they're calling Brock Bowers a generational talent. Now, in order for him to live up to that generational moniker, you got to be able to coach him. And I think that, you know, Clint Kubiak will be able to do just that. Uh, but I want to say thank you all for checking out the State of the Saints podcast. Really do appreciate it. Uh, just want to, you know, let everybody know. Oh, no, nah, nah, I can't leave yet. I can't leave yet. I can't leave yet. I'm sorry. I got one more sound bite. Got one more sound bite. Uh, that I'm going to uh, play. What you got in your mouth? Put that down. All right, got it. That, that's definitely not a. Oh, okay. I see what it is. Continue. All right, but uh, <laughs> oh, it's a toy. It's a toy. It's, it's something that's blocks going. See, I, see, being a father, it never ends, man. It never ends. You got, you got to, you got to multitask. <laughs> you got to multitask, man. You got to. You gotta you gotta discipline and, and direct at the same time, man. But anyway, we got Marshall Lattimore. <laughs> we got Marshall Lattimore uh comments for DA about uh Laddie Daddy. Yeah, no, look, um really nothing new to add there. I mean, you know, Lat's on our football team. He's a hell of a football player. Um I'm excited about what I think he can do for us. Uh, the key for him, really, just like anybody, is can we can we get him in here and, and, and keep him healthy for an entire season? And uh, I think that's what our focus is right now. All right, so a lot of nothing. Um, didn't really, you know, try to, you know, try to down, you know, try to, you know, try to minimize the talk about possibly trading Marshawn Lattimore. But basically said he's on our football team. Like, no is Sherlock. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, of course he's on your team. Like he's a he's under contract. But look, if they get rid of Marshawn Lattimore, it would be a huge mistake. Uh Isaac Adam is gone. That was the guy that that replaced him and did really well. I like Alante Taylor, but uh he he kind of hit and miss sometime. He hasn't really figured it out just yet. He's getting there. So Marshawn Lattimore is the guy that I feel like you need to count on. Um, he talked about some of the injuries he sustained, which is fair. But you're not going to find a, another uh, Marshawn Lattimore. You're not going to find it. Uh, you know, it's a reason why he one of the best uh, cornerbacks in the game and the best cornerback the New Orleans Saints have ever had. Uh, says, uh, TJ, are you uh, taking Bowers or a tackle out of Penn State? The tackle out of Penn State. But, of course, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not – the general manager here, Keen Arthur. But if it was me, definitely it would it would be the uh the the tackle out of Penn State because I think you need I think you need that more than anything, especially since we hear about the situation with Ryan Ramchick. Uh, Dom State winning says Jeff Nowak on Saints payroll. Thank you very much for the one ninety nine. Look, man, I, I I can't slander I can't slander them with you, man. Jeff Nowak is my guy. Good, you know, good dude. You know what I'm saying? I got opportunity to know him, like, behind the scenes. So, 
I know him as, you know what I'm saying? I know I know him like kind of off the record a little bit and I know he's a good person. I know he's a good person. But, you know, I, I can't I can't I can't uh <laughs> I can't bash my guy Jeff Nowak, man. Everybody's different. Like some people, you know, you know, some people are just different. You know, the way that they they deliver and the way that they think. You know, some people are more glass half empty. Some people are glass half full. Some people, you know, like I said, like to look at the positive things on the bright side. Things can be worse, right? I mean, that's just his approach, and I, I can't knock him for that. You know, because he's on brand. That that's that's always who he has been. Like ever since I've known him, you know what I'm saying? Like he's always kind of been that guy. So I I don't think he's on the payroll. I just think that's his personality. Cause he, he was like that before he even like got with WWL. Like why you, when he was, before he was even, you know, behind the mic at WWL, that was the way that he was. Uh, TJ, you remember your reaction when we drafted Cesar Ruiz? Yeah, man. Yeah, that, that was a classic one right there. Uh, <laughs> That was a... <laughs> You can't be trying to trade someone if your conversation involves injuries all the time. That's a good point. That's a good point. Like, what you gonna get for somebody that you know has some injury issues? If it pro, like I, that, that puts something on my mind. I'm wondering what they have traded him, or you know, what the trade have taken place if he didn't uh, have those injuries over the last two seasons. Would would they have found a successful? Uh, trade for him the offensive tackle is the most valuable position of need the saints right now both uh side left and right or question mark that's why i'm saying i'm wondering why we talking about you know a pass catch but that could mean you know odell becker might be coming to town unless you know uh you know he got signed by somebody uh, you know, before I made this podcast or during I made this podcast, I did not check X, you know, since I've been on here. So maybe they, they looking at OBJ or something. I was screaming uh, Jonathan uh, Taylor uh, when they chose Ruiz. Mm. Uh, let's see, TJ, when players is always injured, when does the team start looking at making a medical change? I don't know. That's a good question. That's a good question. I, I wish I had it for you, but I, I don't. <laughs> TJ, what was the most jaw dropping play you experience ever experienced as a Saints fan? Jaw dropping? Uh jaw dropping. That can mean, I mean, what shocking? Like, I can't believe they just messed this up. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty easy right there. That's the game against the Jacksonville Jaguars when they did all those hooking laterals. You know what I'm saying? Like in you know they get into the t they get into the end zone with Jerome Payton and John Kearney just shanks the field goal. Uh, the time when they played the Browns on Halloween when Mike Dicko was the coach and Tim Couch threw that hail mary to the end zone and they lost the game. If we're talking about like positive things, uh, probably, um, it, okay. First when they when Akeem, uh, Isaiah Akeem dropped the uh, the muff punt. You know when they won their first playoff game, uh, when the when they the I guess you can say like Reggie Bush like uh, when he went off against the Minnesota Vikings almost had three point returns for a touchdown. Um, that that game when they played the San Francisco 49ers in the divisional round, I thought they was gonna win when. You know, when they scored that touchdown with Darren Sproles and I, I, you know, lost my mind. I was at work and people thought I was crazy because I was in the break room screaming to the top of my lungs. That's when I was staying in Texas. I mean, there's so many, man. I, I can think about so many different plays, man. But, yeah, I mean, good or bad. But in the 90s, it was mostly bad. You know, I remember that time when this wasn't the 90s. This was like early 2000s. Tight end Boo Williams. Saints had a chance to make the playoffs, right? I think they were playing against the Minnesota Vikings. And it was like third and two. This guy catches the football, got the first down, jumped back, and got tackled. <laughs> no, it was fourth and nine, my bad, fourth and two. This guy catches the ball, gets the first down, jumps back, but behind the line of the game. <laughs> and they lose the football game. I'm like, man, that was the yeah, that was that was that was pretty sickening right there. But those are a few, man. Those are a few. Those are a few plays. 
uh, that I can think of right off the bat. I take I take two more, and then we'll get up out of here, man. Let's see, uh, jaw dropping, unreal moments. Yeah, those was what there was a lot of unreal moments. OG, that was uh, belly aching. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, ram check done. Yeah, man. I mean. <laughs> You up there listening to Baby Shark. Okay, but anyway, uh, I want to say thank you all for checking out the State of the Saints podcast. You can't get this entertainment anywhere, right? You, you can't, you know. Like, who who would have knew that my son was about to come up here with a tablet, you know? But, <laughs> but thank you all so much for checking out the State of the Saints podcast. Really do appreciate it. Much love to you. Uh, previous episodes available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor FM. Also, you can follow me on X, also known as Twitter, or formerly known as Twitter at TJAY Jones 8. You can check out the Gumbo Pie Sports podcast that is available on YouTube as well. And uh, also check out the Unapologetic podcast. It's not sports related, um, but it is a weekly podcast, talks about uh, pop culture. Uh, I got an episode that I recently did last week. It talks about the popular Nickelodeon uh, documentary uh, that's out right now, very controversial. Uh, called quiet on the set now if you haven't seen it it's available uh i want to say on discovery plus if you got paramount you can check it out but it talks about some of the the things that took place uh from a lot of child actors that we grew up like uh liking and admiring um i got that out right now uh and i take a lot of pride in that man i enjoy doing the unapologetic podcast so if you never seen it make sure you check that out also uh working with bleacher report follow me on bleacher report uh, Saints Talk with TJ Jones. Uh, we got some uh, content coming up uh, leading up to the NFL draft uh, that you all can check out. I uh, hope everybody had a, a good day so far. I hope everybody enjoyed the podcast. If this is your first time, please hit the subscribe button. If you if you uh, been here and been watching the podcast, I ask that you hit the like button. Really would appreciate that too. Uh, thank you all so much. Have a good morning, noon, night, whenever you're checking out this podcast. And like always, all I got to say is, thank you for listening to my daddy's podcast. Hey, don't let these tears fool you. It's all dog around this mug. I'm good. <laughs>